look at how the lineup vaccines for kids ages 5 to 11 by this time tomorrow. New rules could be in place for that age group. Plus, a mass shooting at a mall in Boise, Idaho. How it unfolded as police released numbers on how many were killed and injured. And the Madison School Board with a decision tonight of the use of hidden surveillance cameras in district buildings. It's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. Thanks for joining us this time tomorrow. Millions of families will likely be one step closer to protecting their younger children against the virus. The FDA and its advisory committee are expected to approve the vaccine for children 5 to 11 years old. Christina Laurie found out what that means for local families and how soon they will be able to schedule appointments in the Madison area. The rollout will happen pretty quickly after the CDC gives their go ahead. UW Health Dr. William Hartman says shots could be ready for Madison 5 to 11 year olds by the first week of November. At their pediatrician office, uh, at pharmacies. We will be able to supply that vaccine in our normal operation. So we will have uh, pop up clinics. Local health care providers are ready for their part in the national push to get 28 million kids protected against the virus and its variants. At SSM and UW Health, as well as pharmacy chains like hy V, appointments will become available as soon as the CDC and Dr. Walensky sign off on the shot for the youngest age group yet. They're meeting November 2nd. We're going to try to encourage my chart scheduling. Once approved, healthcare providers recommend families make their appointments online. As always, they know some remain skeptical how safe a new vaccine is, especially for kids. This is the, the most uh, extensively studied vaccines ever. Doctors are doubling down, reinforcing that although this specific shot is new, the science behind it is not, making it just as, if not more safe than any of the 14 vaccines most kids already receive by the time they're five. There was no reinventing the wheel. It was just really putting a new hubcap on the wheel. Ready for another rapid rollout to drive down cases before the holiday season. Reporting in Madison for News 3 Now, I'm Christina Laurie. In August, Pfizer's vaccine became the first to get full approval by the FDA for those 16 and up. The vaccine remains under emergency use approval for kids ages 12 to 15. Well, earlier today, Moderna showing off trial results of its vaccine for school-aged children. The pharmaceutical company says the trial among 4,700 showed smaller doses generated a strong immune response in children ages 6 to 11. Moderna says the kids' antibody response kicked in one month after the second dose. The company plans to submit their results to the FDA. Seven-day average for new daily cases in Wisconsin, still below the 2,000 mark. Dane County remains the only county in the state to be in that high category. The rest are very high or critically high. And new video from New York City. Municipal employees marching across the Brooklyn Bridge in protest of the COVID vaccine mandate. If city workers don't get the shot by Friday, the city says no paychecks. Mayor Bill de Blasio called for the mandate because he said vaccination rates lagged behind the general population at several large city agencies, including the police and fire departments. And let's get a look at our certified most accurate forecast now. Here's meteorologist Dana Fulton. It is a little chilly out on the patio this evening after what overall was a cloudy afternoon. Now, we did see some light showers pop through early today. In fact, as we look at this time lapse, the rainfall coming through early on for our Monday. There were a few pockets of sunshine mixed in this afternoon. The sunshine moments helped us climb up into the mid to low 50s for afternoon highs, just a smidge below average. Overnight lows early today, only dropping down to the low 40s. And right now we're already at 40 degrees, so it's already a little cooler outside for us in Madison. 36 in Lone Rock, 34 in Boscobel, and about 46 in Janesville right now. Temperatures will drop a little more tonight because our skies are, are clearer. We don't have the showers and the cloud coverage overhead. So we're expecting those temperatures to drop just a bit more for us throughout southern Wisconsin and even down into northern Illinois. For tomorrow, partly sunny skies. It will be cool for our Tuesday. High temperatures in the middle 50s, but seasonably cool for the end of October. As we look ahead through the rest of your work week, we'll have one more round of rain passing through before we get to Halloween weekend. We'll take a closer look at your full 10 day in just a few minutes. All right, Dana, thank you. A developing story tonight. At least two people are dead, four others wounded following a mass shooting. This was at a mall in Idaho. Among the injured is a Boise police officer who responded to the scene.
And those are gunshots ringing out today at the Boise Town Square Mall. The initial reports of shots fired were made to police shortly before 2 in the afternoon. The first units on scene within minutes and exchanged gunfire with the suspect. That's when an officer was hit. The suspect was arrested. Investigators said there was no immediate indication as to why the gunman targeted the mall. Production on the movie Rust is wrapping indefinitely. It comes after a cinematographer died after an onset accident. In a letter sent to cast and crew, the production team announced it would wrap work on the New Mexico set until the investigation is complete. That shooting happened after actor Alec Baldwin was handed a prop gun, which he told he was told was safe. The Dane County Sheriff says he is looking into temporary housing alternatives for jail residents as new jail plans continue to stall. This Wednesday, the county's Personnel and Finance Committee is set to consider an additional $23 million to the already approved $148 million. Sheriff Calvin Barrett is considering temporarily housing city county building residents in surrounding county jails, but that would cost more than $13 million a year. That is uh, money that is going to be on the burden of us as taxpayers to be paying that, and that money has no return back to us. The sheriff would not need the county board's approval to go forward with that solution if he chooses. Last year, there were about 500 people in the city county building. As of today, there are 648. New tonight, the Madison School Board voting unanimously to ban the use of hidden surveillance cameras. Tonight's decision comes after officials placed them in the East High School locker room in an effort to catch an employee sleeping on the job. But police later determined that one of the cameras was aimed toward an area where disabled students change, angering parents and advocates for the disabled. And a brief scare today at Stoughton High School put on lockdown about 10:20 this morning after school officials say police told them about an armed person near campus. All outside doors to the building were locked. Teachers locked the doors to their individual classrooms while classes continued. The lockdown was lifted about an hour later, but there was some confusion. Stoughton PD tells us the person was already in custody before they contacted the school and the person was not near school grounds. The school district of Janesville says it was hit with a ransomware attack over the weekend, locking students, staff, and parents out of several web-based systems and programs. The district's IT team contacted the state's cyber response team, the FBI, and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Officials said they have not received a ransom note indicating demands to unlock the servers at this point. State Republicans plan to launch another investigation of the 2020 election. Senate Majority Leader Devin LeMahieu announced this afternoon that GOP leaders will authorize the Senate Elections Committee to probe election administration following the release of the election audit on Friday. That report did not find any widespread fraud in the state, but did offer recommendations for the State Election Commission to consider. And this is on top of the GOP-sponsored taxpayer-funded election investigation already underway. Today, a judge has set a December 23rd hearing on whether to block a subpoena demanding records from the Elections Commission. Earlier this month, former State Supreme Court Justice Michael Gableman sent subpoenas to the commission and five Democratic-leaning cities demanding election records and ordering officials to appear at interviews. This week marks the final round of speed reductions in Madison as the city works to make roadways safer. The reductions first were introduced through the Vision Zero program to help reduce speeding, and the city hopes to report zero traffic-related deaths by the year 2030. Traffic officials say the program is a success so far, but there are some challenges. I think the biggest um, kind of hurdle or, you know, um, the biggest uh, measure of success, I would say, is if we can adapt driving culture. And the mayor says the program reduced speeding between 30 and 90 percent in some areas. A $43 million mixed-use project on the city's south side getting underway today. The project at South Park and Cedar Streets will include 150 mixed-income apartments and space for a 24,000-square-foot grocery store. That neighborhood was at risk of losing a major grocery store and becoming a food desert. The apartments will include 30 supportive units, the most affordable and accessible apartments designated for those with disabilities or veterans. Construction will begin immediately and should be ready in about a year and a half. Some vacant store space in Janesville is expected to be transformed into the area's newest sports complex. A committee has been working for more than three years to turn a space at Uptown Janesville into a new, new ice arena. The estimated cost of the project is around $20 million. So far, nearly $4 million in private donations have been secured. And tonight, a vote by the city council would put another $2 million toward the project, with that money coming from the Federal American Rescue Plan. Plan. It's a real opportunity to transform the Milton Avenue corridor in Janesville and, and really bring a lot of economic impact to the community. So we're, we're really excited. 
Woodman's and Mercy Health will have naming rights to parts of the arena, which will include a 1,600-seat ice rink. The main rink is intended to be the new home of the Janesville Jets hockey team. And check this out. A saga is coming to an end more than two years in the making. Today, crews removed the final section of a cargo ship that capsized off the Georgia coast in 2019. The Golden Ray overturned in St. Simons Island. Workers started disassembling the vessel and removing it from the water in sections in February of 2020. The Golden Ray was carrying 4,100 vehicles and 24 crew members when it overturned, resulting in more than $200 million in damage. Still ahead tonight, a big day for Tesla, landing one of its biggest deals yet. Plus, a local mother calls for action over concerns that a staffing shortage at her child's school is leading to a reduced education. That story's ahead. Stay with us. Portage families here at the Portage Furniture Store, the Ayers family that has grown a little bit since, yeah, he says high five. That's right. <laughs> since the last time we were we, here. Yeah, uh, we sure have. It's Austin and I, proud third generation owners, and now we're working on our fourth generation. We've seen generations of customers come through, and I think we take a lot of joy in seeing, hey, my parents bought from your dad or bought from your uncles or bought from your grandpa, mm -hmm. and now Austin and I get to enjoy that ourselves. How much fun is it on the days you come back into town and the three of you are together. It's, um, it's very special. Like I said, longevity from when my dad and uncle started in 1940 to now, very special. We're very, very proud to showcase uh, predominantly American-made brands and uh, companies that we've worked with for a very long time. We have a number of great lines, including Serta Mattresses, Smith Brothers, Flex Steel, Lazy Boy, and England. And not everyone has the heir's last name, but everybody here, I know you guys consider family. Yeah, we really have some wonderful people here, including, you know, two salespeople, Rosie and Punky, who have been here with us from the very beginning, and we're really thankful for them. Yeah, they really make you guys, they're the ones who make you all look good. Yeah, they are. No doubt. And we need all the help we can get. Yeah, well, he said it. I <laughs> what are some of the biggest things that set you guys apart? The free delivery. delivery. Yeah. <laughs> they still got it. I was wondering. We do. Glad to yeah. hear it. And on top of a you know, first class free delivery service, we're very proud of our huge, uh, huge selection of top name brand uh, furniture at guaranteed low prices. <laughs> well, with the free delivery, we've got a lot of stops, but I'm glad you're helping me. From the Portage Furniture Store, I'm Emmy Fink, and you're buzzed into Madison. He's excited. Just outside of a town called Basic is Basic Lake, where families gather together for some basic fun. And if you have the 2021 Nissan Rogue with five drive modes, you can climb above Basic and find a trail where no one else goes. The 2021 Nissan Rogue, anything but Basic. Get 0% financing for the 72 months on 13 models or save up to 4262 on select models. Tomorrow morning, we're in the six away with a Halloween display that's sure to shiver your timbers. We'll talk to the masterminds behind this motley crew of ghost pirates. And shivering temperatures could be on the way. That's tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. You are watching News 3 Now at 10. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. The oil business continuing its spectacular recovery topped $85 per barrel today for the first time in seven years. That marks a 13% jump in oil prices this month alone and a 120% rise since this time last year. The average price Americans are paying for a gallon of gas now stands at $3.38. And it appears a lot of people no longer want to deal with gasoline. Tesla is now the sixth company in U.S. history to be valued at $1 trillion. That's more than the 11 largest global automakers combined. Shares for the electric car company topped $1,000 each today. Also today, Hertz says it has placed an order for 100,000 new Teslas. It is Tesla's largest order ever by a single buyer. That purchase also represents the biggest move into electric vehicles by a rental car company by far. Hertz says the move is to address customer demand for those electric vehicles. A Madison mom is calling for action, telling our team a staffing shortage at the school 
school district is leaving her daughter without the resources she needs in class. We are respecting the mother's request not to name her daughter out of fear of bullying. Our Leah Lynch, I looked into the problem statewide and how a local college hopes to help. I'm gonna fight and go to war for my babies to get what they need. Andrea Amos will go on the defense for her daughter every time. My job is to protect you from that, and I'm gonna do that by all costs. She's a teenager, just turned 15, and loves basketball. <laughs> But sometimes Andrea says the game seems stacked against her. She wants to learn. That's her biggest thing. Andrea's daughter is adopted and has fetal alcohol syndrome. She suffers from short and long-term memory loss. Her teachers at La Follette High are supposed to follow an individualized education program, or IEP, assigned since kindergarten. She's supposed to have a person with her to help her understand the directions because of the sensory issues. But this school year, Andrea says her daughter has come home unhappy, claiming she wasn't receiving that help. Andrea called the school and also talked to her daughter's teacher in person. Both times she was told this. They weren't going to be able to cover her uh, for her IEP because they didn't have enough staff and other kids with uh, special needs will trump her. We checked with the Department of Public Instruction. Under state and federal law, a student's IEP must be implemented as written. And we checked Andrea's daughter's IEP. It specifies she received 30 minutes of additional adult support in each core class. School districts shouldn't have opened the school without all of the kids in mind. We've seen school districts struggle to fill positions across the board, but it is especially troublesome when it comes to the shortage of teachers for special ed. DPI's best data for determining just how short Wisconsin is on special ed teachers is the number of emergency licenses issued for the position. Last school year, public schools issued almost 1,100. That's a roughly 300% increase from the 2012-2013 school year. They hear about the stress and anxiety and hard work of dealing in, in special education. It provides a clear path to a meaningful profession. Madison College might be part of the solution. They've created a clean pipeline for two-year students to transfer to UW-Madison with automatic admission into the School of Education as long as they meet certain milestones. The goal, to entice more future teachers who might not otherwise have thought a four-year degree was for them. The Madison Metropolitan School District, meanwhile, isn't playing ball. We asked for a comment on Andrea's allegations in half a dozen calls and emails the one response we received is that the district thought her complaint had been addressed. Andrea says otherwise. One class she's in, she's not getting help in that class at all, still to this day. It leaves her wondering whether other kids with IEPs are getting the help they need, too, for a fair shot at school. If I had known that, she could have went through the whole school year and not had any help, and I thought they said no kid is left behind. In Madison, I'm Leah Lynchide for News 3 Now. If you have a consumer complaint you need help with, you can call for action anytime online. Just head to channel3000.com slash call for action to file a report. Well, check this out. The $5.2 million megabucks jack jackpot lottery ticket sold this weekend in Cottage Grove. It is the largest lottery payday in the state so far this year. It was sold at the Quick Trip on Landmark Drive. So check your tickets. The winning numbers, 7, 18, 27, I'm going to wait here, 7, 18, 27, <laughs> 38, 41, and 43. This is a drawing from Saturday. Now, if the winner takes that cash option, it'll be about $4 million. Congrats to somebody very lucky out there. Meteorologist Dana Fulton, she's still there, right? She's here at work. I'm here, I'm here. So make yeah. sure that wasn't you that won that. If I had the ticket. Be, you're here and you're, you're monitoring tires some, screeching. some nasty weather around the country. Yes, yes. Uh, well, we're sitting in a pretty quiet spot for the next few days. It's going to be a little messy for our friends on the East Coast and on the West Coast. Our showers that we saw yesterday, that system now moving off to the East Coast bringing stronger thunderstorms stretching all the way through the Carolinas and, and heavy rainfall as well. Again, that's East Coast looking to the West Coast over the last several hours. This system uh, bringing quite a bit of rain on Sunday through California into Nevada. A lot of precipitation because then that turned over to snowfall several feet
feet of snowfall for some areas of Nevada. Now those showers moving into Utah. Now for us, a very different picture. Sky is becoming partly cloudy overnight, and that's going to lead to a little more sunshine for our Tuesday. Temperature wise, it's seasonably cool outside, pretty close to where we should be for this time of year for our afternoon highs over the next several days. More sunshine expected for Tuesday. Today, of course, we did see a few pockets of sun, but not a lot of it coming through. Our next opportunity for rain develops late Wednesday and heading into Thursday. Most of the rain uh, really coming through for us throughout the day on Thursday. Tonight, we're expecting temperatures to fall to the low 30s. A light breeze coming in from the northeast throughout the day tomorrow. Shifts becomes a little more southerly late Tuesday heading into Wednesday, but still staying pretty light for us. A little more cloud coverage building in throughout the day on Wednesday. Wednesday will likely stay dry except for maybe the fringe edges. The western side of the state could see a slight chance for a shower late in the day Wednesday. That rain chance really develops for us late at night heading into Thursday and Thursday we're expecting scattered showers to develop, but uh, throughout the those overnight hours, it's really more of a blocking effect where the rain will pretty much pause through uh, Minnesota and Iowa for much of the late afternoon on Wednesday and overnight before finally moving east and bringing those scattered showers throughout the day on Thursday. So Thursday again, a little more saturated outside. We might see a few lingering showers early Friday morning before that rain pulls further east. The cloud coverage clears out as we head into Halloween weekend, sunny skies and drier weather once we get through that rain event. Partly sunny for tomorrow, still cool outside. 55 the high for us in Madison, just generally trending in the mid 50s for afternoon highs. Again, this is close to average through the rest of your work week and the weekend. So we look ahead to next week. We do dip down. We get a little cooler outside, but not too much of a drop from where we should be for afternoon highs for this time of year. Wednesday skies will become mostly cloudy. We do have the possibility to see those showers at night with scattered showers expected for us for Thursday and for Friday morning. The rain will come to an end early Friday and we might see a little bit of clearing late in the day. Dry weather sticks with us for Saturday and Sunday for Halloween Sunday. It should be cool outside, but dry. And for next week, the first week in November, temperatures will be in the mid to upper 40s for afternoon highs and overnight lows will be trending close to freezing. Sports, Giannis and company are run by the Pacers tonight. How the Bucks dynamic duo dominated in Indy. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Crazy Lenny's Fall Clearance Sale. Fat tire, e-bikes, gravel, snow, hunting, 2400 Nope, on sale for $1,400. This $1,900 e-bike, 40-mile range, just eight eighty. dollars At Lenny's Fall Clearance. E-bike prices are the lowest in the fall. You protected our rights, preserved our freedom. You may have even risked your life for us. Now, it's our turn to fight for you. Your local Wisconsin emergency, energy, and housing assistance providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund reward the service of our veterans with rental and energy support in their time of crisis. Apply today to get the fresh start you've earned. Find your style with Patriot Lighting from Menards. Add elegance to any room with Patriot Lighting ceiling fans. They reduce energy costs all year round. Save 11% off all Patriot Lighting ceiling fans. Lithonia Lighting has recessed utility, tromper, and flat panel lights to choose from. The integrated LED lights will save you energy. For everyday lighting done right, get 11% off all Lithonia Lighting. Get 11% off everything at Menards. Save big money at Menards. We love our house. Been here for years. Yeah, but there's an animal in the attic. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. Bundling made easy. Go to Geico.com. Uh -oh. 
I have worked at Huffcore for the last 36 years. Huffcore, closing the plant, moving production to Mexico. I gave my life and my body to that place. Ron Johnson pushed through a tax law that rewards outsourcing. Companies can bring profits back from Mexico tax-free. And worse, Ron Johnson profited personally from outsourcing. He has doubled his wealth since taking office. Tell Ron Johnson to stop putting his profits above our jobs. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUV of the future for everyone. Ford Explorer, America's best-selling SUV, with available seating for up to seven passengers and available terrain management system. Because the SUV of the future isn't built for a few, it's built for America. Ford Explorer, drive one today. Now lease an Explorer XLT for just $389 a month, only at your Wisconsin and UP Ford dealers. Crazy Lenny's Fall Clearance Sale. Fat Tire e-bikes, gravel, snow, hunting, 2400 Nope, on sale for $1,400. This $1,900 e-bike, 40-mile range, just $880. At Lenny's Fall Clearance. E-bike prices are the lowest in the fall. Badger Volleyball moved their Big Ten win streak to nine straight after two big-time performances. Wisconsin beat both Ohio State and Penn State to add two more to their top 15 wins in their total. And in the process, the conference took notice, naming Dana Retke its Player of the Week after connecting on 40 kills in those two matches. And for the fourth time this season, Sidney Hilly was tabbed Setter of the Week. Speaking of awards, fresh off their sweep of number two Ohio State, the Wisconsin women's hockey team was honored by the WCHA. Nicole Lamantia went back to back as the league's defender of the week after she scored both goals for the Badgers on Sunday. And Bl Kennedy Blair is the WCHA goaltender of the week thanks to stopping 52 shots in the series. And not to be outdone, Badger football got into the conference awards this week. Leo Chanel and his five and a half tackles for loss and three and a half sacks earned him big. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week honors, while Colin Larsh is the week's Special Teams Player of the Week for scoring 12 points against Purdue. Arguably the best wideout in the NFL and Aaron Rodgers' top target might not be playing on Thursday against the Cardinals. The Packers have placed Devontae Adams on the reserve COVID-19 list. Adams will have to test negative two days in a row in order to play against the Cardinals, and so will D coordinator Joe Barry, who tested positive for COVID-19. So with a short week and a couple different game plans to make, you could say it's been a crazy Monday for Matt LaFleur. It's hard to plan for the unknown, but... I think that just the, our process, I think that gives you confidence that no matter what you encounter, that you'll have a, you'll be able to come up with a, a good plan to help, you know, just navigate through whatever adversity we have to go through. Bucks wrapping up their three-game road trip, taking on the Pacers in Indianapolis, and Chris Middleton and Giannis had it going on tonight. First, it's Kay Mid beating the buzzer for three, plus one on his way to 27 points. And then in the third quarter, Giannis playing some D. The steal turns into points. He goes coast to coast for two of his game-high 30. Bucks go on to win 119-109. to 109. Pat Connaughton had how many, Eric? 13 and 7. <laughs> They're back home this Wednesday against the T-Wolves. We're back after this. It's more than a basketball court that nurtured a championship. For Alex Lazary, building Pfizer Forum was about creating opportunity. We said workers come first, $15 an hour pay, and 80% of the building materials are going to come from Wisconsin. Alex Lazary kept those commitments. Some just talk. Alex got it done. That's why so many labor unions are supporting Alex. He'll be a senator who works as hard as Wisconsin. I'm Alex Lazary, and I approve this message because leadership is about what actually gets done. When 140 mile per hour winds come out of nowhere and try to wipe you off the map. When you look up and see sky where your roof used to be. When the power is out and stays out for seven or eight or 10 days. When the phone lines are down and the cell phones have all gone dead, you find out who your friends are because the worst brings out our best. 
Spectrum Mobile is reinventing wireless again. Introducing the best deal in mobile. Unlimited on two or more lines for just $29.99 a line. All on a nationwide 5G network that provides the best overall experience and reliability. Call 844-677-2999. Unlimited for $29.99. This offer's gonna take off. We changed the rules when we introduced mobile with no contracts, no added taxes, and no hidden fees. And now we're doing it again. Making it easier to get unlimited for less with our best deal ever. Get unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99. That's amazing. It's the best deal in mobile. Join the millions who've switched and get the best deal in mobile. Unlimited talk, text, and data with nationwide 5G included for just $29.99. And save up to 60%. Call 844-677-2999. Click SpectrumMobile.com or visit a store near you. your next Chevy truck and forge ahead. Take on new challenges and take it to the next level. It's the perfect time to do more in your next Chevy. Find new possibilities, find new roads. Eligible customers get great offers from GM Financial Plus. No monthly payments for 120 days on all 2021 Silverado 1500 crew cab pickups and get $1,500 cash allowance. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Just the two of us. Tower. Redefine laundry in half the space. A sexual abuse victim's search for justice, Thursday at 6. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. You know what? You're going to want to stick around tonight for this late show with Stephen Colbert. He's got a very special guest on tonight. The man who was born to run, the man, the myth, the legend, Bruce Springsteen himself. The late show with Stephen Colbert coming up right after News 3 we call, we, call him the, we call you the boss around here. Right. We all know he, that. He's the boss. Mm -hmm. he's, he's on, is he above or below Manilow, who you saw Friday night? Ooh, I'm going to say Barry's You and up Mark there. have seen Manilow. I, in the I last am, month. and Mark and I are going to go back. We are totally going back. Barry sang to me. We're all Sorry, on Dana, I took your time Sorry, talking about, about Barry. <laughs> Stay tuned for the boss, folks. Have a great night. <laughs> Do something good. We'll see you tomorrow.